What's up y'all, Kashi here, and welcome to another episode of Ignition and Beyond. In the past three episodes, we've looked at how your air intake system works, modifications to improve your air intake system, and even took a look at a car that had a cold air intake installed. Today, we're going to be jumping in to the next thing your car needs to run, which is fuel. There are two main systems to get fuel into your engine, and today we're going to be looking at the older of the two. Today we're going to dive in into how return fuel systems work. Let's do this. The first main component in a return fuel system is your fuel filler port, which is basically the port that you pump fuel into. Your fuel then travels down a chute known as your fuel filler neck and into your gas tank. In most cars, including this Honda Civic, your fuel tank is in the back. Its purpose is to store fuel as you drive. So this fuel tank can hold approximately 50 liters of fuel. From your fuel tank, your fuel pump draws fuel out into your supply fuel line. Along the way, fuel passes through your fuel filter. Similarly to your engine's air filter, your fuel filter cleans fuel as it passes through, removing any gunk that can get into your engine and cause damage. On an older car with a return fuel system, it's recommended that you change your fuel filter every 40 to 50,000 kilometers as regular maintenance. But unfortunately, changing a fuel filter is a lot more difficult than changing an air filter. After passing through your filter, fuel continues down your supply fuel line and into your fuel pump. There are two main types of fuel pumps, mechanical and electric. Mechanical fuel pumps are driven by either your camshaft or crankshaft. If you don't know what camshafts and crankshafts are, they're simply rotating shafts used in internal combustion engines. So here is a simplified diagram of a mechanical fuel pump. You have your rotating camshaft with a little lobe attached at the end. This is known as your cam lobe. Here you have your lever, a diaphragm, a spring, and a one-way inlet and exit valve. As your camshaft continues to spin, the cam lobe at the end pushes down on this side of the lever, causing this side of the lever to rise. As the lever rises, it pushes the diaphragm up. As your diaphragm lifts, it creates a zone of little to none air pressure in this chamber. Now air does not like to have an imbalance in pressure, so the air throughout your fuel tank and fuel lines will want to rush into this chamber in order to have a balance in air pressure. But as the air tries to rush into this chamber, it pushes the fuel along with it, filling this chamber up with fuel. As your camshaft continues to spin, it no longer pushes down on this side of the lever. And so, the spring forces the diaphragm to return to its original position. But remember, this chamber is still full of fuel. The fuel cannot escape through your inlet valve because remember, it's a one-way valve and so fuel is forcefully pumped out your exit valve. Electric fuel pumps work similarly, but instead of being powered by your camshaft or crankshaft, they're powered by an electromagnet. Your electromagnet pulls down on your iron rod using magnetic force. Attached to your iron rod is your diaphragm. So as your iron rod is pulled downwards, so is your diaphragm. And that pulls fuel into the chamber, similarly to a mechanical fuel pump. As your rod descends, it interferes with the current powering your electromagnets. Your electromagnet loses its magnetic force, and the spring pulls your diaphragm back to its original position, pumping the fuel out similarly to a mechanical fuel pump. Mechanical fuel pumps are often found on older cars. Newer cars use electrical fuel pumps as they are stronger, 
able to pump fuel at much higher pressure. So after being pumped, your fuel enters your fuel rail. Your fuel rail sits parallel to your engine and its function is to supply fuel to each of your fuel injectors. Your ECU monitors the amount of air entering your engine with an MAP or MAF sensor. Then it determines the correct amount of fuel that should be added in order to achieve the appropriate air fuel ratio as well as the time that it should be delivered. Then it sends the information to each of your fuel injectors which squirt fuel into your engine as needed. Each fuel injector supplies one cylinder so in an inline four we would have four fuel injectors. Some engines don't use fuel injectors. They use systems known as carburetors, but carburetors are a subject for a different video. All right, so we've covered how return fuel systems get fuel from the fuel tank, through the filter, through the pump, through the fuel rail and injectors, and finally into your engine. But what about your return fuel line? Before, we looked at how your fuel pump works. Unfortunately, your fuel pump doesn't have control over how much fuel it pumps through the system. If it pumps fuel with too much pressure, this can result in an excess of fuel going into your fuel rail, your injectors, and finally your engine, which would result in a rich air fuel ratio. And that would be inefficient since you're using up extra unneeded fuel. So that's why at the end of your fuel rail, you have your fuel pressure regulator. To relieve your engine of excess fuel pressure, your fuel regulator reroutes any unnecessary fuel back into your fuel tank through a return fuel line. That way, your engine can run healthy with the appropriate air fuel ratio. All right, bet. So that is how a return fuel system works. Keep in mind that this Civic actually doesn't have a return fuel system. It has the second, more modern type of fuel system in which I will get to in the next episode of Ignition and Beyond. So I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider leaving a like or subscribing to my channel. I would really appreciate it. And as always, if I made any mistakes or I left out something important, ooh, nice integrator swim by. If I made any mistakes or I left out something important, feel free to drop a comment below. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay safe and I'll see you all next time.